Right, so this video is on, um, it's on credentials basically, and I was going through one of the exchanges, but like this applies to all, you know, all different things where you sort of like connect with APIs. And I was going through well, one of these things where I connect with an API, and it's kind of like, what's the best way of doing this kind of in terms of you get an API key and, a, um, and an API secret, and you've got to connect in some way. So, um, basically something like we have a file here and um, we'll do our I'll just do a main I wonder if I've got this here main or if let's have a look or template no, I don't have a template set up so let's just do a control plus to get the size of the font bigger so that every, everything can be seen as well um, and actually in particular like you know it, there's one thing that I refer to here maybe which is like this git ignore bit um, which is things that you want to ignore because um, you don't want to expose your private credentials somewhere or other, um, you know, onto a, like a main place or a GitHub or, or somewhere where, where it's some repository where other people can see it, so you'd compromise your details. So um, <clears throat> let's just do um, def, um, we we'll define a function and, you know, we'll have our na usual if, uh, if name equals main, and we'll call this main function here. So we just have a main function. So just something like that, which is our main idiom. And inside of our function, we kind of like the first thing that we want to do is we want to get credentials. So it's something like we'd have, um, we'd want like an API key. And that's going to be equal to something. So some, some API, um, username values, something like that and then we would also have over here our API secret so something like this and, and the question is and, and again um, this will be a secret the secret and our secret key secret uh, 999 key it normally comes in some sort of crypto uh, format like that god knows what, what it is it's much more much more hashed than that but this is something like that um key um 888 user there we go user value so something like that but we don't want to expose this in the code so at the moment like everyone can see this and if i wanted to kind of like ask a question or host it or show my minimum reproducible example on, on a site like stack overflow what i would have to do is um well i wouldn't want to be showing this so like how can we get this in a different way that it's not shown and, and then we've got we, we're going to have some api that actually uses it so so here we've got um and then well I guess i guess another function uh call uh, the API and it usually requires the API key and then it requires the um, API secret so it'd be something like this and from our main we could then call the API and here we would pass in our API key. So our API key is equal to the API key in our particular case and the API secret, which is equal to the API secret in our case as well. So that's kind of like what we want to do. And so here we would be um, call the API. And here we are the credentials. Now, we can see here that the credentials, without a shadow of a doubt, they're exposed. So like alternatives to doing this, and so like, what can we do? And this is like, you know, this is my lazy first version of it. I, but I'll, so I'll make a new folder, a new, uh, I can make a new file, but I'll put it in a new folder even, just to keep it separate. We can have a credentials folder, creds. Um, so I've done this before. And then um, inside of it, I'll make a new file, and I will call it like creds. Uh, pi and inside of there we'll actually put in our api key and secret so it'd be something like this um, which is quite nice um, 
we have to get rid of the indentation. Uh, we can now put a comment. Oops, control Z there. We can now put a comment if we like. Uh, these are here are the credentials. Here are the credentials. So that we've we've got this here, and now um, so this is kind of like method one already. So over here we could put. Um, so I might actually call this get credentials, right? And this this let's call it a few different methods. So uh, method. I'll actually call this one method one. Method one. But it's very exposed and simple. But it's simple. So the negative is that it's exposed. Everyone can see exactly what the credentials are. They're written right here. If I wanted to share the file, um, everyone's now seen all of the, all of the credentials. Um, so it's exposed. But on the other hand, if I want to do something off the fly quite quickly, Python's great at this kind of stuff. It's very simple. I can just bang them straight in. Now we've got like a second method here. So we've got a method, uh, method, let's do a hash, method two. And method two would require this import. So we'll call it import, right? And so we can take use of um, Python's very, very simple, um, simple import uh, statements. So import um, creds, or we could do from creds import creds. We choose what we want. Import creds. Uh, let's see. Let's have a look. Why is that not? Uh, maybe because I haven't. If I actually save this file, um, no. Let's hit save. Control S. There we go. Um, and now I wonder if that will work. So um, let's go back to our main.py and import creds. No. I'm just wondering why that's not doing it because ah. Uh, um, because we are from our creds, We're, we've got a subfolder nested. So, so we need to do um, from creds Let's have a little check off of that. So I had to do a I had to do a quick relaunch there, but let's just do it now. Um, so from creds uh, import creds import creds so i think that should work and um here we now can have our api key like what we'll just do it like this uh, api key and then we can have um will be equal to creds um, dot and then here we got the api key and likewise the api secret will be equal to creds um, and then dot api secret so we've got this second method and actually like with method one we can now call the api so let's just do it so method one we'll call our api down here and inside that call statement just to show that it's working we would do something like let's just print api key um, and then also print the api secret so that'll be the first that, that's our first call and it works uh, or we'll see if it works and then our second call so we're going to call the api second time now we'll get api key and api secret and it should well, we should get two of these so when we do a run the f5 to run it um, we've got our natural method over here the first answer that comes down our api key and our api secret and then um, the second version here which is our api key and our api secret and maybe we'll make this just a tiny bit clearer here so we can do something like print um, the api key is the api key and then over here maybe we can do x controller and then print and then again something like the api secret and we can, I think I've got the comma already in this. We've got the API secret. And we can actually just call this just for the sake of it as well. 
we'll just call this a uh, method. So, and we'll just call this uh, method one, right? So that's method one here, and we'll just pass that into our argument as as well. Um, so print, and then something like so. We'll make this an argument. So method. Um, um, and then just do using method and then colon and then what the, whatever the method is so maybe it's just a little bit clearer now in terms of what we're doing so we've got using method and then method so we'd have to pass in here uh, method um, it was method equals method there you go so we kind of like passed everything in uh, I've done it very full and explicit we don't need all of these equals fact maybe I'll, I'll remove it just for the simplicity just to make everything look nice and clean because we know each of the arguments what they are so let's just do that and then also just one more thing I guess before the order sort of print um, and a blank line there and we'll just print a blank line afterwards just for the sake of because we're going to repeat the code anyway so we want to see our outputs multiple times and then when we hit run f5 to run it all we haven't put in our second method over here so method equals method Right, method two. There we go. Something like that, which is so. So this is it. The the first method, method one, is exposed and simple, and the second method, method two, is using the import. So I'll even put the brackets in. Let's put the whole lot in there. There we go. Because it's a string, so that's fine. Uh, method two. So that was method one. And method two was using the import. So copy that and paste it in here just like this. So there we go. And now when we run the code, if we get it down at the bottom, we can see like here we go using method and we've got method one and it's exposed and simple and it works. And then we've got method two. So we've got these two methods so far. Um, and our second method here was using the import so now we're going to just try a third and, and it's quite simple using the imports um you know the files over here we just imported the credit the credits.py so our third method is to we'll just make a json so new file um creds.json now the json can kind of like be anywhere so it's got a small advantage and it's also not a python file that you import so um, you can sort of read it as a JSON. Um, you can put it in a completely different location, you know, make it a hard, um, like a hard file or something, or, and, and therefore you don't need like tree structure or anything else. So we've got this creds.json, um, but this creds.json is going to need the same values in some way. So uh, a JSON file is formed in a slightly different way. Let's hit the tab there and do it. Um, this is going to turn out to be a colon. This will have to be in quotation marks. And these ones here also will have to be in double quotes. Because this is just how a JSON's written. So, and then we need a comma. And then this one here, likewise, will have to be in the quotation marks. That's got to be a colon. And this one here is also in quotation marks and let's just tab indent it so this is how our json file should look and we go back to our main.py and we're now going to have a method three we can't i guess we can copy all of this format and we'll just sort of like modify it so method three um we'll call it read json Now, we don't have to read the JSON file. We could also read a YAML file, a text. We could read a text file. Um, could be text, uh, YAML, 
yet another markup language, um, a, a whole variety of other files, CSV, because it's just a key value pair, basically, CSV. Um, so, a whole, so a whole variety of alternatives, but we'll deal with it with JSON because JSON's, um, it, it's, it's relatively terse and fast and it's used for communicating, um, it's used for communicating um, data quite e quite easily. So let's just do this. Uh, we'll do, do an import um, JSON over there. And then we will do something like, um, so this is going to be method three, which is reading the JSON file. Um, so method three, um, read JSON file. Right, and then it would be something like, we'd need a file name because we need to know where our file is. Um, and let's just see if we can do relative paths. I'm not sure if we can or can't, but file equals at the moment is creds um, dot JSON. But the path will be a bit longer because it's actually in our creds folder. So it might be something like um, creds dot creds JSON, assuming that that, that that it takes that we can do relative file paths. And then we've got to have to have a read JSON. So I'm just going to, I actually had this one um, open. So I've started to use Bing, which is a different type of AI. Um, you know, we've got, I've got all of them. I, I use them all from time to time. Um, this is Google Bard, which I use. So, you know, I've been looking at Dolph Fortix and other things in Google Bard. Um, and this ChatGPT as well, that's kind of like the most popular one. From time to time, I tend to go back to ChatGPT just because it works nicely, but I'm testing this one out. But I'm just going to do a um, read JSON uh, file into Python dictionary. It's quite nice because this one lets you do the tabs. And I did a comparison video. I might add this onto the comparison video because it does tabs. And the other thing is, is it's got this nice thing on the side here, um, which is a, a little bit more convenient than the other ones. And it looks like you can easily delete and edit them. So. Um, so well done to Bing for doing it. But the one thing about Bing is it's a little bit slow because we can see this stop, like uh, we can stop it responding, but it's kind of like doing its thinking now. Um, and it's kind of like taking a bit of time, um, whereas other ones would be a little bit faster. So if I was to stick in Bard, um, let's just do that actually here we go i'm going to just stick it in bars just for the same thing here read json file generally bars is actually faster i don't know why um might be my connection let's have a look because it's taking time in bars now no here you go bars already come out with the answer import json with open da, 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 as read file so it's doing it a lot quicker here it's still kind of like writing so a tad annoying i tend to use bars because it's a bit faster but you know what it's over here anyway so we've done the import json and then we've got to do the with open. That's what I've. That's what I was to like going to do. I'll keep it on the. Um, I'll keep it somewhere on my side. But basically, um, over here we're going. And it's this. This is a little bit more cumbersome, should we say? Because we've got to do now one extra statement. So with open, um, I've got a whole bunch of stuff there already. Fortunately, this bit here is file now. Uh, file. Um, and read this f and then f dot read but hold on, I'm just going to make sure that that's a JSON um, it's, it's JSON dot load for a JSON file so here instead of f dot read we're going to have um, actually I'll copy the whole lot so there we go data equals JSON dot load f and then what is our credentials now it will be data assuming that it works and then it's going to be our first value here which is the api key i should have actually put that all in here so api key and then likewise this will be data and then open brackets here and then api i prefer copy and pasting because you always get typos um, API secret and if this gets read I don't know if it will get read because this is a relative path here but we'll see uh, we'll get our method three and it should print it all out if it does work and it's going to print it out down into the console if I hit that down at the bottom over here where I'm highlighting so just this part here so 
let's just do that i'll hit the f5 and run it it might crash let's have a look yeah, it does crash because it's got no such file as creds, creds.json, which is a little bit annoying because now I have to get the path of the folder. Um, so that's a tiny bit annoying. I do have that somewhere, but what I'm going to do is going to uh, get the path quickly. Um, let's. I'm going to go to Bard. So um, get path of current file. In Python, it's just a little bit quicker. I've actually got it somewhere already opened up somewhere, but let's see. this this should kind of like do. Um, I already know this because I've done it a hundred times. But import um, OS. I like to put, by the way, the imports in the right order. So there we go. I like to put them in order of um, size. But actually, the convention normally is just that the standard imports go first and then other imports that you've created. So this creds one will go next. So I've just done an import OS there. And then um, I think we can do something like, OK, path will be, it'd be something like this. Um, that um, which is os.path dot the absolute path of the file um, and then kind of like full file and you can see why the JSON's a little bit more annoying in a way um, it's just os.path um, dot join and hopefully if it's just the path name and not the um, and not the file name as well, os.path to join and that will be the path and the file. And here now we can put in the full file. Well, that might work. So this has cost us in terms of lines of code and now we'd have to get rid of this. Now it's just creds.json again. This has now cost us um, rather than one line of code, we've had to do two imports the import OS and the import JSON. So there's two bits here in, uh, as opposed to the one um, line here. And then um, we've had to put our file name, so that's one line of code. We've put our path in there, that's two lines of code. We've had to get the full um, path name, um, you know, that sometimes it depends on what operating system we're in because the thing Linux accepts the relative paths. I'm in Windows here. Um, and then I had to do the with statement and the with statement um, to open up the file um, then allows for the JSON dot load. So it's quite a chunk for, but no, it's not a huge amount, but it's one, two, three, four, five lines down the bottom and uh, two imports at the top. If I've done it right, maybe it will work or maybe it won't work. Let's have a look. Um, no such file and directory. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, there we go. The main.py is coming here, right here. So um, the OS, um, the absolute path, we just want the path name. So I'm just going to go back here because this has happened loads of times. I already know how to ask it. So um, just the path um, and not the file. There we go. Uh, hold on. Oh, it's my fault because I probably didn't even copy it out. So it's just there. But oh, it's the uh, dir name is the one that we want. So it's this one here. So instead of absolute path, um, we want the uh, directory name of the file. So stop and um, F5, just run that. Test creds, creds.json, let's have a look. No such file or directory. Um, my drive program, uh, test, test files. That's interesting because it should work now, I believe. Creds.json, did I have a typo in there? No. Um, let's have a little think about that. Right, so I've just spotted what the mistake is. So let's just go um, and stop that. Um, over here, um, 
where we do the path.join is this actually a subfolder here so this is actually um, creds over here because it's in our creds folder it's one nested folder down so I've got the nesting wrong I think so this should make it work now but you, we can see that it's a bit clunky and it's a bit annoying I've had to try it like four times to get it to work but the, there we go down at the bottom over here if I can get onto it um, um, there we go we can see here that we've got method three and we've used our JSON file and it's read it in um, it's a bit clunkier but we can still like move our JSON file around to different um, play, different locations but at, the, at this you know it's like at this point I guess maybe I should sort of like highlight it um, over here is where it's so sort of like we'll call our cost our computational cost um, so here's our computational cost you know we just had to make it we could do the we could first of all use the dot notation when we did an import creds.py that was one nice thing that we could do straight away um, so everything sort of like automatically came up and we just had to stick all of our credentials into this file in a very very simple way with an equals and nothing else um, so that was quite nice and we just had the uh, import at the top and it may be in a way that's kind of like quite telling and sort of like useful um, and we don't have to share this file because so we can like we like we've got the from creds dot creds but we know what the credentials what the credentials are and we just never had to share this file um, so that's one thing that we could do but now we've got this json method as well but the cost of our json method here was um, you know this amount of lines basically and I came across one other one which is dot m and I like I think I've basically got it here already so let's just put re put that up if I can um, because I've been asking the question earlier on is this dot m thing um, so and the format's kind of like from here um, I was asking, can you have two dot m files? So there's limits. There's good things and bad things about it. Like with a JSON file, and you know, I kind of like feel like um, once I've like built the infrastructure for reading a JSON file, it's quite easy. Um, it's a little bit of annoying at the beginning, but afterwards it's quite useful. Um, but with the JSON file, you can make multiple versions of JSONs, and you can put other stuff in there. And actually, a JSON file reads it better. But I've come across this thing, which is to make a, a dot m file. So it's kind of like well. Um, okay, now what does the .m file do? Um, here we've got the import OS, but now we've got this uh, from .m import load .env. So, so we'll do this fourth method. And, and, and reading the, the docs, it's kind of, um, this is the way that it was done before JSON came into play, and then now JSON's around, but like the m file is easy to exclude. So this is how it was done. So let's just call this one here, uh, method four. <coughs> And I didn't put the dot env in here on purpose because it's read in a slightly different way. So and I was like, well, do you have to put something before the env, like you know, uh, my credentials dot env? No, it's not, it's just dot env. And if you wanted to have a second environment file, you put a dot something else afterwards. It's still like a hidden file, is the way that it's described. So we're going to have a dot env, and in order to do that, we are going to need to do this import. So I'm just copying that import from the file that we saw before, and I'll stick that into here. So from dot env uh, load dot env, and um, then we actually uh, method four. So we're going to load the dot env like this. And the thing about the .env is that it needs to, we have to create create an environment file. Well, it doesn't need to live, like it's suggested that it lives in the same um, directory. So here, if I go over here, it just, it will live in the test creds folder rather than the creds one. But if we put it in the creds one, because I did test it, you can do a path name on it. So here we will do a new file and then .env and it looks like a little cog over here, like the image of it is this like little cog. Here's a Python file, here's a JSON file and here's this .env file. And the .env is relatively similar to this one. So apart from that, it doesn't even need um, 
so it doesn't need to be told it's a string. I wonder if you can put spaces in there. I didn't see it with spaces, I'm gonna leave it without spaces. Um, you know, maybe spaces are applicable, but you can put a comment in here. So uh, this is the, uh, here are the credentials. Assuming that got spelling right, but let's see, anyway, I hit save and it's there. And now we've got this loads.env, and I think in the um, load.env um, yeah, you can have a .env path, and I think this does allow relative paths, because I did try it before, creds. Dot, um, I think it's actually just, um, what did I do in a previous one? Let's have a little, um, let's have a little look. So I think, um, yeah, ENV, I think I could just put that in like that. And then, um, I had it written down somewhere, but we, we could then get the API key in the same way. So our API key um, is equal to um, os.get, um, en get env just wondering why the um dot env is grayed out there um from domain ah because i got the return statement right in front of it silly me so um let's hit i was just wondering why it's grayed down put the return statement down there at the end um, so this is method for reading the .m file. Um, so I've done creds.m, but I, I, for some reason I think that worked when I was doing it. Um, I could chat GPT it or whatever, or Google Bard it, but let's just um, get it um, anyway. So, but, but from the uh, get env, we can then just go back in here, because anyway, it'll either work or it won't work. We can call the API key like this, and also the secret. You know, might as well take that one of this, copy that, and paste it over there. And this time it will be um, os dot get env get env, and then we can take all of this, which is the API secret, delete the rest of that stuff, and put it in here. And then again, finally, we can call the API. And this one will also, we're just going to call it now because um, let's have it method. So method equals, and then we'll have method four uh, underscore four. Um, read file so something like that which has the API key the API secret and the method over there and I suppose if we run it we'll see down the bottom over here um, it will run and we'll get a method for if it works I don't know if it works I've just done creds.env um, I would have thought that maybe it needs a forward slash or something, but let's just try and see what happens. Because don't forget that this get m thing kind of like it, it's a, um, or at least a, the load dot m is it's kind of like it's a routine in itself. So pass a dot m file, it just says it over here, pass a dot m file, then load all the variables in the environment variables. It's got a parameter absolute or relative path to the environment. So that's quite convenient because. Um, rather than with the JSON, um, we, I'm not sure they offered the relative path thing. Um, well, let's have a look actually on the JSON. Did it offer a relative path and I didn't use it correctly? Uh, oh no, because it's got a with open statement and... And if the... Uh, so, a uh, file is either a text or byte string uh, given um, giving the name and the path um, if the file isn't in the current working directory of the file to be opened so i think this one always kind of like needs the full path as far as i know i don't think that you can get away with a relative path um so the a way around getting the relative path at least um 
is by um, doing this path, e uh, path equals OS dot path the directory name, and that's what I gets you the path, and concatenating it back with this OS dot path dot join. So it's kind of like clunky up here, whereas this one, this method four looks relatively simple. We're going to run it now. So let's just hit a F5, see if it does run. Um, and we've got a none and a none here. So it looks like, and let's just get our spelling right. Um, let's just put our forward slash in and see if that one works. F5. Uh, none and none again, maybe a forward slash comes in here, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, none and none, so uh, rather annoying as it was. Um, I'm just trying to think um, of a way of getting it working. So I guess one thing I can think of is just going back up to here and getting this um, whole relative path name. So let's just try this over here and in front of our dot .env. So let's have a look and let's try that. So now we've got our path, um, which is up to this file, and then our full path, which is joining the, the current path to the cred um, file and then the file over here. And then um, our file now is, let's have a look because, oh yeah, um, file equals um, dot env. So something like that, that'll be our environment file and that will sort of like join it all up. And over here now, our um, dot env path. And I guess that's one thing is, I think the path actually, and the reason why it's not working, um, at least in the way that I think it should, is because if we look down here, this is like my drive, um, and it stops over here, and then I've got like nested things. So I think we're working officially in this path. Um, whereas this um, bit here, this os.path.dir name, under double underscore file, and in particular the double underscore file, is um, the current file that's being run, which is the if name done, if the double underscore name equals double underscore name is one of the um, is one of the um, attributes of the file. So um, this guarantees getting the right path. So it's kind of like you know with all of these file methods, I'm going to say it, it's probably necessary. But anyway, let's just put that all in there. There we go, full file. So it's kind of like working nearly exactly in the same way now as the JSON. Um, let's just see if it works because we were getting, if we look down the bottom again, we were getting this none and this none and obviously we want to get something back out of it. So let's put some colons in here as well. Just so let's hit F5 and see if it does work now. Hopefully you don't get nuns and nuns. And there we go. So now we've, we're able to read the env files. If I expand this all up, um, and so let's scroll over here. We've got our first method, method one, which was really simple, but we've exposed everything to the user. Then we had method two over here, which um, was the import of the um, Python file. Then we've got method three, which is reading this JSON file, which was put in another folder. And we select had to navigate into the path of that file, wherever it was. Um, so the import one was, um, so it's kind of like you're in order of simplicity. This one's by far the simplest, but you're exposed. Um, this one's the next simplest, but you can sort of like get there relatively fast. Um, and then, I mean, this one's quite nice because you only need one um, one import basically, and then you just sort of like read the credentials. So quite like, I think for me, this one's actually the winning one. You might forget, the one argument about this is you might forget to hide this. Um, if you were sort of like sharing your entire file or folder directory, um, then these two are kind of like really in a way equivalent. This, my understanding is this one is slightly older um, in terms of methods and then it's like JSON came in. Um, I think there's some small advantages, like um, you could set it up as actual environment variables and so sort of like put it somewhere on your system and then like, it's kind of like you never sort of like need to have the file anywhere. Um, but they're basically the methods, so that's kind of like what you do. And you know, if we didn't have 
we could call this unacceptable method one, although it's damn easy. So method one is accept, uh, is unacceptable because we've literally, I cannot share the code with you um, without having my API key and secret there. Um, but all of these other methods, method two, look how clean it is, three lines of code. Um, method three, okay, it's a little bit messier. Um, and method four, a little bit mess messier in both counts because we needed to read, um, actually read a file, and really the reading of the file, we needed to get the path to the file, and that's kind of like what cost us with this chunky little piece of code there um, in both cases. Um, here we saved, instead of doing a with open file to read it, we've got a load.env, you know, that's kind of like the, uh, what I guess the one difference, you've saved one line of code, basically, um, because it's good. I'm presuming that the .env in a way has got a read statement somewhere in it, effectively. Um, and that's basically it. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, I don't know which method's best. I've used them all. I've sort of like, toyed around with them all. Um, for ultimate speed, um, I think the best compromise if you're going, uh, if you like want to go quick and don't mind having the import there because it kind of needed to be there anyway, um, this one for me wins, but I know it doesn't win for other people. So this one is the import um, a Python file. There we go, we import a Python file. So this one is the winner. Um, for me, because it's just so simple, it uses the dot notation, so you don't have any typos once you've got the credentials in there. Um, you can put a whole bunch of notes and stuff as well in here, and, and quite frankly, you could put methods and other bits of code as well. Not that you would necessarily do that, because your other bits of code um, might then become um, important. You, totally, you might keep it separate, but you could sort of like put more notes and comments if you did want to um, have things here, and it gets read at the beginning. I suppose one disadvantage is if you got to read the credential files multiple times for some odd reason and maybe they were to change, uh, you could select change adjacent and reread adjacent. Where is the import? You'd have to unimport it possibly and reimport it. That would be, um, I'm not sure I've ever, I think that's a clunky or frowned upon method in, in Python. Whereas um, reading a JSON file multiple times or reading an environment file multiple times. Um, they're, they're acceptable. Certainly reading a JSON file multiple times because that's what it's built for um, would be quite acceptable. Um, so they're the options. But given that you do, th this is kind of, we're only talking about an API key and secret. Um, you do only really read that once. And even if you were to read it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be changing the key and secret. Um, and if you did, you would probably uh, keep that change in the code. So I think by and large, I've never had issues with this, funnily enough. Um, and the only thing that I ever really had an issue with was um, if I was ever to need to kind of like hide it. But I think this one's the winner for me, actually, quite frankly, having gone through everything. Um, the, I'm going to announce the best way of keeping your um, API keys and secrets, a secret um, hidden away. Um, in a fast, convenient way, is just making you know a separate creds file somewhere and, and reading that. So uh, that's it. That's the end of um, the little videos. It's quite um, it ended up being I don't know quite a long one, but um, sort of like useful and helpful to a certain degree. So that's it.